SpaceX has kicked off 2026 with an incredible amount of momentum. In just the opening weeks of the year, the company has already launched dozens of Starlink satellites, while at the same time pushing full speed ahead on preparations for the next Starship launch. Engineers at Starbase are working day and night for Starship's future. But what SpaceX has just revealed about how these upcoming Starship launches will actually work is not what most people expected. In this video, we're going to break down exactly what SpaceX revealed, why it matters, and how it could reshape the future of Starship operations. Before we dive any deeper, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future updates on Starship and SpaceX's other groundbreaking achievements. It's no doubt that one of the most surprising and important things SpaceX has ever achieved is landing rocket boosters on drone ships in the middle of the ocean. This idea sounded unrealistic when it was first proposed, but today it is routine. SpaceX has been doing this successfully with Falcon 9 boosters for nearly a decade, and it completely changed how orbital rockets are operated. With Falcon 9, the process is precise and highly automated. After liftoff, the rocket burns for about two and a half minutes before the first stage separates at an altitude of roughly 70 to 80 kilometers. At that moment, the booster is traveling at around 2.3 kilometers per second. The upper stage continues toward orbit, while the booster performs a boost back burn if it is returning to land, or a re-entry burn if it is heading to a drone ship. For ocean landings, the booster does not reverse course fully. Instead, it follows a downrange trajectory that can place the landing zone anywhere from 300 to over 600 kilometers away from the launch site. As the booster re-enters the atmosphere, it experiences extreme heating and aerodynamic forces. Grid fins deploy to provide control, allowing the booster to steer itself with centimeter-level accuracy. The final landing burn begins just seconds before touchdown. At that point, the booster is falling at several hundred kilometers per hour and must slow down to zero exactly as it reaches the deck of the drone ship. The margin for error is extremely small. The drone ship itself is not stationary. It moves with waves, wind, and ocean currents, yet SpaceX routinely lands boosters within a few meters of the target point. Each Falcon 9 booster weighs around 25 tons dry and stands over 40 meters tall, which makes the precision even more impressive. Now SpaceX plans to apply this concept to Starship, but at a much larger and more complex scale. Starship is not just a bigger Falcon 9. The system consists of two fully reusable stages, the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship Upper Stage. Together, the full stack is about 120 meters tall, making it the tallest rocket ever built. Super Heavy alone produces over 74 meganewtons of thrust at liftoff using 33 Raptor engines, more than twice the thrust of the Saturn V. After liftoff, Super Heavy burns for roughly two and a half minutes, similar to Falcon 9, but with far more mass and energy involved. Stage separation occurs at around 65 kilometers altitude. At that point, Super Heavy performs a flip maneuver and begins its return. For launches from Texas, the booster is designed to come back to the launch site. About nine minutes after liftoff, Super Heavy returns and is caught by the launch tower using the mechanical arms known as Mechazilla. This catch avoids the need for landing legs and allows faster reuse. The booster's dry mass is estimated at around 200 metric tons, which means the tower arms must absorb and stabilize an enormous amount of momentum during the catch. While the booster returns to the launch site, the Starship upper stage continues to accelerate to orbital velocity. Starship reaches speeds of roughly 7.5 kilometers per second to enter low Earth orbit. It can then complete one or more orbits depending on the mission. During early test flights, Starship does not yet attempt controlled landings. Instead, after completing its orbital or suborbital trajectory, it re-enters the atmosphere and splashes down in the ocean. These splashdowns typically occur thousands of kilometers downrange, often in the Pacific or Indian Ocean. This is where the challenge begins. Recovering a vehicle that lands in the ocean is extremely difficult. Salt water causes corrosion almost immediately. Even a short exposure can damage engines and heat shield tiles. For Falcon 9, ocean landings are avoided whenever possible because boosters that splash down are usually not reused. 
Starship is even more complex. The heat shield alone consists of thousands of ceramic tiles that must remain intact and precisely aligned. A hard splashdown or prolonged exposure to seawater can make refurbishment impractical. SpaceX's long-term plan is to land Starship on drone ships, similar to Falcon 9, but much larger. A Starship drone ship would need to support a vehicle roughly 50 meters tall and around 100 to 120 tons dry mass. The landing forces are also higher, because Starship returns from orbital velocity, not suborbital speeds. Even with a controlled landing burn, the energy involved is far greater than Falcon 9 recoveries. This requires a much larger deck, stronger structural reinforcement, and more advanced stabilization systems. However, even landing on a drone ship does not solve the full problem. Once Starship lands offshore, it still needs to be returned to a launch or refurbishment site. Towing a drone ship with a landed Starship back to port could take weeks. During that time, the drone ship cannot be used for another landing. For Falcon 9, this is manageable because boosters land relatively close to shore and the hardware is smaller. For Starship, the distances are much greater. This is where something new comes in. SpaceX has recently revealed that it is working on a dedicated system to transport Starship and Super Heavy after landing, whether they touch down on a drone ship or splash down in the ocean. The key challenge is that returning a 50 to 70 meter long rocket stage from the ocean to land is not just a recovery problem. It is a heavy logistics problem. A landed Starship cannot simply be lifted onto a standard cargo ship. The vehicle must be stabilized, rotated from vertical to horizontal, secured, and protected from motion during transit. Ocean waves can cause rolling and vibrations that place stress on the vehicle's structure. Even small movements can translate into large forces when dealing with masses over 100 tons. For early missions, where Starship prototypes are still being evaluated, any transport-induced damage could end months of work. These barges are different from landing drone ships. Their job is not to support landings, but to safely move vehicles over long distances. These transport barges need to be extremely large. A single starship laid horizontally requires more than 60 meters of deck length when accounting for support structures and clearance. Super Heavy requires even more space. Early transport missions are expected to carry only one vehicle at a time. Over time, SpaceX plans to move toward carrying multiple vehicles per trip, which implies even larger ships or modular deck designs. The distances involved are significant. Transporting a Starship from Texas to Florida by sea is roughly 1,600 to 2,000 kilometers. At average cargo ship speeds of 15 to 20 knots, a one-way journey takes four to seven days. At the end of all this, everything comes down to cost. SpaceX is not building Starship this way for show or marketing. Musk has repeatedly said that the long-term goal for a Starship launch is around $1 million. That number sounds unrealistic today, but the important part is how SpaceX is structuring the system to even make it plausible. To understand why SpaceX is obsessed with things like offshore landings, transport barges, and rapid turnaround, you have to look at current launch economics. A Falcon 9 launch is publicly priced at about $67 million. However, Musk has explained that this price includes profit and overhead. The actual marginal cost of flying a reused Falcon 9 booster is estimated to be closer to $15 million, possibly lower as reuse improves. That alone already undercuts most competitors. Starship is meant to go far beyond that. Musk has said that early Starship launches may cost around $10 million per flight. As reuse improves and flight rate increases, that cost could fall to $5 million, then $2 to $3 million, and eventually approach $1 million per launch. Hitting that number requires Starship to fly often, return quickly, and avoid long refurbishment cycles. A vehicle that lands far out at sea and sits on a drone ship for weeks cannot reach those economics. That is why returning Starship efficiently is just as important as launching it. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.